In this section, we're going to see MOS cap when a VG is applied positive, which is higher than the depletion mode case that we have seen in previous section. The MOS cap enters into inversion mode. So in this case, we are taking VG is positive, but we are not saying it is small. So when we apply positive potential, just like we have seen in depletion mode, that there will be positive charge coming onto the metal, which will be shown in this case where this is a volume charge density. So we have positive charge in the metal side, metal oxide semiconductor. And we have negative charge here because of depletion. Now what happens is, from depletion, as we keep increasing the VG, we'll reach a point where the depletion region increases to a maximum value, maximum value, which is XD max, and after which it stops increasing anymore. It stops increasing anymore. But then, when we increase gate potential, the gate charge would increase, but then how is the charge compensated or equated. It is equated with an inversion charge which is because of electrons near the silicon dioxide silicon surface. So uh, if I can pictorially uh, represent here, there will be depletion region like this, depletion region into the semiconductor, but near the surface there will be a region which will be with electrons. It will be with electrons. Now this charge is called the inversion charge. Inversion charge. Now in case of depletion we have seen the band bending to some point and if you keep on increasing Vg the band bends to a point where the surface at the silicon dioxide silicon interface would become n-type by inverting the underlying material which was p-type to start with. So we have inversion charge and here this is depletion charge. So let me call this Q depletion. This is Q inversion. Now we have this Q metal. Now with this, if we draw the electric field, we would get electric field because this is impulse, we would get a unit step kind of thing and then it would drop and it would come like this. So this is E ox and this is E si and we know how to calculate these values. We have seen in depletion mode. Now looking at this, if you see the electric field to potential, it will be linear but now the potential across the oxide would be higher compared to the depletion. Now the potential across the semiconductor also would increase. Potential drop across the semiconductor would increase. Now this entire thing, now as we discussed even in depletion mode that as we assume the bulk is grounded, hence this potential should be zero, which means this potential should be the gate potential. This difference is Vg and this value is Vox and this potential is basically the surface potential which is also called the potential drop in the semiconductor. Now looking at this we can actually draw the energy band diagram. In energy band diagram Q times Vg should be the difference between the Fermi energy levels of gate to that of Fermi energy level of semiconductor. In this case, when gate potential is higher compared to bulk, the Fermi energy level of metal should be lower compared to Fermi energy level of bulk. Because the potential is defined according to positive charge, but the energy, the energy band diagrams are drawn according to electron energy, which will be reverse. Hence, let me put that the Fermi energy level of gate should be lower. So I'm putting Fermi energy level of gate to be lower. And then Fermi energy level of uh, semiconductor to be on the higher side. 
and deep inside the semiconductor ev should be closer to ef because it wouldn't get affected now ei should be somewhere here and then ec at the surface because it is inverted so ef minus ei should be considerable hence it would be like this and this also should bend and then this as well bends now the oxide interface will be like this and the oxide interface at the metal now there is a band bending here which is q times psi s and there will be a potential drop across the oxide which is q times v ox and this is fermi energy level at metal this is fermi energy level at semiconductor ei ec now if you see here this is the q times fermi potential now in this case if we observe q times psi s q times psi s is in fact greater than 2 phi f times q so we can say psi s greater than 2 phi f if surface potential is greater than 2 phi f which means this difference ef to ei ef minus ei at surface will be greater than phi f which means at the surface of silicon dioxide silicon it is more n type than it is p type in the bulk because if you see the carrier concentrations here the p type value is equal to ni times e power ei minus ef over kt this is in the bulk so let me put this in the bulk whereas at this surface whereas at this surface here n is equal to ni times e power ef minus ei over kt if if psi s is equal to let's say example psi s is equal to 2 phi f which means ef minus ei at surface at surface will be equal to ei minus ef at bulk right then n will be equal to p which means the amount of electron concentration at the surface will be equal to the whole concentration in the bulk which means this semiconductor has been inverted to a level where the electron concentration at the surface is equal to the whole concentration inside the bulk now if the surface potential goes beyond 2 phi f which means the electron concentration here would be higher than the whole concentration in the bulk region this surface which was initially a p type material was inverted to become a n type at the surface so if you see there is a region below the oxide where you have electron concentration which is nothing but the channel creation 